right, here we go. Hello, everyone. My name is Cy Venom, and I'm your host today on Containers from the Couch. We're going to be talking about securing secrets on Kubernetes, specifically Amazon EKS. Uh, and I've got two guest speakers with me here that I'm super excited to introduce, experts from HashiCorp, uh, who today are going to be talking a little bit about HashiCorp Vault. Um, if you're watching in chat today, we are live. Please ask us any questions. Uh, so that we can we can kind of uh, ask our guests here live, um, but you can always catch recordings of this episode as well on YouTube. Um, drop a, drop a comment in the chat. Let us know where in the world you're tuning in from today. All right. With that, let's go ahead and introduce our guest, Steve. I'll start with you here. Tell us a little bit about what you do at HashiCorp um, and what you're planning to talk about today. Steve, you are on mute. Yep. Thanks, Sai. Uh, pleasure to be with you all today. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, of course. Uh, Steve Almey from the Vault product management team at HashiCorp. And uh, today, excited to dig into uh, not only the criticality of secrets protection and a secrets solution, secrets management solution, uh, but also to uh, share with you some solutions there uh, to get you thinking about how you can move forward. Excellent. Ben, uh, off to you next. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you do at HashiCorp. And you're going to be our demo guru today. So maybe a little sneak peek about what you're planning to demo as well. Sorry, I'm getting uh, lots of audio feedback. <laughs> um, not sure what's going on, the duplicate audio. Yeah, so uh, uh, I'm Ben Ash. Uh, I work work at HashiCorp. Um, I'm uh, on the Vault uh, ecosystem team as a senior software engineer. Okay, excellent. Um, uh, just just to confirm, any more audio issues? Or are we good to go? Okay, awesome. Yeah, I can hear myself. It's sort of like an echo or something. Oh no. Okay, you may want to check if the the stream's open on a on another tab. But okay, let's let's go ahead and jump into it, folks. Drop a line in chat if there's any issues that you're hearing. Um, let's start with secrets and why secrets management. Uh, Steve, I'll, I'll kind of pose this question to you. And actually, it seems like Ben dropped. So I think I can only pose the question to you. Um, what is the relevance of secrets management when it when it comes to Kubernetes? Sure. Uh, and maybe just take half a step back, Sai. Uh, we think of secrets as anything that really protects or gates access to a resource or a service online, of course, with um, lots of workloads moving to Kubernetes and EKS, um, where sort of um, things that used to be behind the firewall are now out in the semi-public, although even highly protected there. Yeah. Um, more critical than ever to really protect the resources that your applications have access to uh, through a proper secrets management approach. Um, interestingly, in the last couple of weeks, uh, even the last few days here, as we're taping this, and probably uh, at any point in the future that someone would be watching the replay, uh, there is a recent uh, security breach in the news. Um, customers are being called either publicly or privately and, and advised to rotate not only the secrets on that service, but the secrets for every other service that might have been shared through that. So uh, getting control of that sprawl, that secret sprawl, uh, really critical and more critical than ever in a Kubernetes um, you know, many, many, many containers running environment out in yeah. the cloud. Absolutely. Now, I, I think my, my next question, I, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, Vault itself and how, you know, it provides a centralized secrets management solution, which, you know, is a lot of syllables just to say that uh, the secrets are being managed in, in, in a central uh, approach. And, and uh, you know, but before we get into that, there, there's a number of different reasons why someone would want to use that. And, and, and so we'll go through them one by one. Number one, let's talk a little bit about security. You mentioned secrets leakage. Uh, so in the world of Kubernetes, secrets are not actually encrypted. If, if folks don't know this, uh, they're just encoded, Base64 encoded. So um, not, not as secure as they potentially could be. And, and, and I know that Vault takes some steps to, to help address this. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Um, one of the things we do on Kubernetes is that, um, uh, and yes, and of course the joke is that uh, secrets on Kubernetes are 
at base64 encoded, as you as you referenced, Sai, uh, those can easily be unencoded uh, by just a simple Unix command, simple command line command. Um, so we need to take uh, take measures to protect those. Um, we really support this in two ways. So first of all, um, for anyone listening out there, please be sure to encrypt your etcd. Um, that's the most critical piece and the and the sort of the base starting point uh, for encrypting those secrets at rest. Um, you could still uh, the next sort of stage from there is to be sure that you're protecting access to your clusters uh, and your containers out there to be sure that um, anyone who's actively involved on that cluster um, is fully approved to be there and known to you and, and so on, right? So um, sort of two levels of security there. Um, beyond that, by uh, leveraging a solution uh, like a centralized secret store on Vault and being able to connect those uh, instantaneously into Kubernetes, uh, we build a refresh capability, right? So, um, of course, the the secrets in transit are secured all the way down to the to the cluster when they're handed off to Kubernetes. We're subject to the Kubernetes uh, policies, uh, but in between there, what we do is is having the ability to push new secrets into Vault, uh, excuse me, from Vault into Kubernetes uh, on demand uh, at a frequency determined by the user by the admin, excuse me, um, we can really keep uh, limit the exposure, the risk of, of the, a leaked secret in that case. Yeah, that, and that makes a lot of sense. And, and of course, you know, when running an Amazon EKS, we, we do provide you the ability to you know, do that envelope encryption um, using KMS to encrypt your secrets at rest that are stored in etcd. But um, you know, the, the secrets themselves uh, are just base64 encoded. So so realistically, if you want that additional level of encryption, it you want to use something like Vault or Secrets Management Solution uh, to, to get you to that next step. Uh, today, of course, uh, we're, we're going to be diving a little deeper into Vault. Uh, ben, I see you're back. Um, so, so we talked a little bit about you know security, security footprint, and secrets leakage as a reason for why you might want to use something like Vault. Um, Next, let's let's talk a little bit about static versus dynamic secrets, which is another big advantage, I think, for for using a secrets management solution. Ben, um, I know you're going to be demoing this, but can you talk a little bit about the difference between the, those two types of secrets? Yeah, yeah. So uh, with respect to Vault, uh, dynamic secrets are secrets that are sort of like uh, created on demand, so uh, maybe upon request. Or they could be secrets that are periodically uh, rotated by Vault itself, uh, whereas static uh, secrets are basically well, they main, pretty much maintain static uh, uh, stored in Vault, and they do require some sort of um, agent or user to periodically update them, and uh, they don't really affect any sort of like downstream or other like sort of managed applications like a database engine or something like that. Whereas in the dynamic case, Vault can actually create credentials within, like, say, a Postgres database engine, and then manage the lifecycle of those credentials. So, if someone revokes that dynamic credential in Vault, then uh, the the database engine that has that credential will also have its those credentials removed. Whereas yeah. in the case of static, you could end up with some sprawl where they could leak out, and um, in terms of management, they could uh, be more easily exposed. Yeah, and, and, and really, this is not a new concept. It applies to signing keys in general, uh, any sort of encryption. You, you want to make sure that uh, while well, customers would like the ability to have the, you know, the, the notion that they can revoke uh, access to a key, that, that the key is no longer valid. You know, in the case of a data breach or something like that, you want to make sure that those keys are revalidated, refreshed, and you know, anything that's leaked, you want to revoke them. So it makes a lot of sense from, from that perspective. Not a new concept, but in the world of secrets, um, you definitely have to consider um, a, a way to do that. Uh, yep, I, and, exactly. and, and I think uh, as we dive into the demo, a lot of this will become um, a, a bit more clear as well. Um, now, for the demo itself, we're going to be talking about integrating you know, HashiCorp Vault uh, with Amazon EKS and specifically showing how the two work together. But I've got to ask, how does Vault and like how do Vault and Kubernetes actually work with each other in the first place? What are what are those integration points? And so, um, yeah, go ahead, Steve. 
So I think we have a slide that shows actually the three integrations that uh, Vault provides. Thank you. Um, today we have uh, three integration possibilities. They're all fully supported on Vault uh, and fully supported across EKS, of course. Um, starting on the far right, uh, just for variety's sake, uh, the agent injector runs uh, sort of a, a mid, mid to heavyweight uh, uh, application uh, that pulls secrets from Vault uh, down to Kubernetes, uh, really follows a sidecar pattern. So we're spinning up sidecar per pod, uh, pulling those secrets down from Vault, and then injecting them through shared memory volumes. Um, applications uh, look for those secrets at certain places. So there's a little bit of um, little bit of customization to be done there on the app side. Uh, as we move to the left, so very, very isolated though, secret visibility, right? So we skip some of the, the uh, base64 encoding risk that we talked about earlier there. Uh, the CSI provider, uh, which plugs into a secret store driver uh, proper and morphs that for vault connectivity. Uh, renders those secrets to shared shared volumes uh, on the on the cluster on the pod uh, runs only on pod startup so you the, some of the benefits that um, again great for certain use cases uh, some of the benefits that Ben just talked about with refreshing dynamic secrets and getting ephemeral secrets uh, aren't yet supported uh, through this plumbing uh, all the way through. Uh, and then that brings us to the Vault Secrets Operator, which is our newest, uh, been out uh, just about a year now uh, in a fully supported GA mode. Uh, legitimate operator uh, to sync uh, secrets from Vault. And by secrets, we mean uh, tokens, passwords, certificates uh, directly into Kubernetes secret objects, so native Kubernetes secret objects specifically. Uh, and very easy for applications there to pick those up, to pull them in just as they would any other secret. Um, allows uh, organizations to really decouple the management of those secrets from the consumption, right? So any, anytime you can decouple like that, you can accelerate your application development and deployment uh, and really put those responsibilities where they belong. Uh, and then just in sort of to wrap this up, um, the Vault Secrets operator is highly scalable. Uh, it runs one operator per cluster. Uh, so you think we're, we're syncing from Vault down to the cluster uh, and can do that very efficiently um, uh, sort of on a one-to-one -one basis there. Uh, Steve, if I had to ask you to pick one of these, now, and I'm not even sure if that makes sense, but if you had to pick one, uh, w w which one would you go with? Um, so I was um, I was here for the launch of the VSO, the Vault Secrets Operator. So maybe I'm a little jaded. Uh, maybe I have been looking over my shoulder here. I'm not sure, but uh, the Secrets Operator really just takes away a lot of the pain for for all those uh, different personas that we talked about earlier, uh, and um, really has still great potential that we're we're planning for the future. So um, this is where I would go, Sai, But I'm not deploying hundreds of thousands of pods. Uh, in the in production environments uh, in my home here either. So um, we do okay. have lots of lots of customers doing that at at this scale. So and, and that's fine. And, and I think it makes a lot of sense because the the model that you're providing with the secrets operator is native Kubernetes secrets. And and so you're able to leverage things like you know the built-in Kubernetes RBAC policies. You're you're giving developers access to secrets in the way that that they're used to already accessing them. And the very important thing that I think you delineated here was you're able to better separate the notion of, of the devs who are working in Kubernetes versus the operations teams that are helping manage some of the, the plumbing behind the scenes. Um, and and, and where, where there's a lot of overlap in you know, DevOps, there's also places where you want to have a clean, clean line of demarcation. And, and secrets seem to be one of those things, Go, kind of going back to that dynamic secrets conversation as well, where for dynamic secrets, if you wanted to revoke something, um, you know, you want to make sure that the ops team has the ability to do that. Okay, I, I think we've talked at length about uh, secrets management, secrets and vault. I, I would love to see some of this stuff in action. Ben, what do you think? Are, are we ready to, to kick off the demo here? Yeah, I think we can give it a try. If the audio holds up, uh, let's see. I'm just going to share my screen again. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, Ben, I know you've got a running, you know, eCAS cluster here. I've got your screen up uh, as well, um, and you know, I I know that you spent just a little bit of time showing this to me earlier, but I love the fact that we're seeing a terminal centric view for our viewers at at home. Uh, the the numbers that we see for for our customers using the CLI versus something like console or UI are pretty remarkable. It's 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 I think very common that that the CLI is used. Um, to, to work with really anything Kubernetes related. So excited to see this, Ben. Yeah, I, I agree. That's it's, it's simpler for at least for our development uh, developers that are working on Kubernetes for sure. Yeah, so, so I thought I would just kind of go over a few of the, the bits and pieces of Vault Secrets Operator if, that, if you're okay with that. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, so the Vault Secrets operator is, is just an op, uh, another Kubernetes operator responsible for synchronizing um, secrets from the multiple different uh, source uh, data sources. Um, it supports the uh, Vault uh, uh, dynamic secrets, static secrets, PKI certificates. It also supports uh, HCP uh, Vault secrets, which is our managed uh, Vault secrets um, um, service. So you can sync in HTTP Vault Secrets uh, using uh, the Vault Secrets operator. Oops. Um, it's running here. I have in this uh, demo, I have an EKS cluster up here running in US East 2. Uh, I have Vault running um, in the cluster deployed via um, actually Corp, our Vault Helm chart. And then I have a Vault Secrets operator deployed uh, using our VSO. I call it, We call it VSO, Vault Secrets operator Helm chart. Um, you can see Vault is running. Um, in this case, Vault Secrets Operator is running. So uh, the general model is that uh, the design of VSO is, is meant to be modular. So that means uh, it's relying on uh, custom resource definitions, um, um, primarily the, um, yeah, so these ones. So these custom resource definitions um, define uh, the uh, custom resources that can be applied to a cluster. And we've kind of separated those out into different pieces that could be mapped to different roles within an organization. So uh, there is the Vault Auth custom resource, which could be managed by a Vault administration team who's responsible for provisioning Vault's uh, configuration, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, and maybe they want to just um, control who can create these Vault Auth uh, custom resources. Uh, and the same goes for Vault connections. So these are these contain the configuration necessary to connect to Vault, like uh, TLS configuration, URLs, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, and then we have the, um, and it's the same for HCP auth as well. So this is for authenticating to the HCP uh, platform. So, so Ben, um, if I and, understand right, yeah. for at least the, the start of this demo, you've got Vault running in the cluster itself. So. When it's when it's running, you know, co-located to where the secrets are leveraged, um, I'm guessing you still have to set up the authentication to to work with that Vault instance. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So you do have to set up the authentication and all that. You can provision that through like uh, the Terraform Vault provider, so on and so forth. For the demo, I've done that, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna show that. But yeah, I'm using Terraform to provision Vault um, beforehand. And then I'm using uh, Terraform to create some custom resources as well. So, for example, the uh, here we have a uh, the default uh, Vault Auth custom resource. Uh, you can see that uh, this is sort of uh, an instance of that, and um, the configuration would reflect uh, paths and configuration that would be on the Vault side. So, um, in this case, it would be using a Kubernetes authentication um, using a service account to authenticate to Vault uh, uh, for this uh, mount point and this within this Vault namespace. So, in this demo, we're running Vault Enterprise, so that would be applicable. So, I was going to ask if you wanted to authenticate with Vault, did you need to use a secret to then be able to access your Vault secrets? But okay, that, that's good to see that at least um, you know the approach that you've taken with the service account allows you yep. to you know bypass the need to have uh, an unsecured secret in your cluster. Yeah, exactly. And it does support uh, so Vault Auth does support like IRSA, AWS Auth as well. So you can see that set up here. So this would be using an IRSA service account um, here um, with the uh, specification for AWS Auth. Yep. 
So you can you kind of mix and match these things based on whatever authentication backend and vault you want to use. Yep. Got it. So Got it. yeah, and then if you want to actually get uh, consume some secrets, uh, you would you can uh, create these custom resources for the secret type you want to consume. So those are kind of broken down into the kind of classification of secret. So we have dynamic secrets, PKI, static, and so, we also so have man, this is vault actually. Secret. Sorry to interrupt you. A good time yep. to bring up a question in chat uh, from Kamba Abi, who's asking, can secrets be used for important config values, such as database connection infos? Kamba, yes. you'll be happy to hear that, yes, that's exactly what uh, secrets should be used for. Um, but Absolutely. following up on that, how do applications get the secrets? Is it as environment variables? Are there other options? I figure it's a good way um, to segue into what you're about to show here. Yeah, yeah, so that's a great question. Yeah, so typically the way it works is, uh, the secrets operator will sync the from the source secret or the source of the secret. Uh, it'll take that data and it'll populate a Kate's a Kubernetes secret. And then the application itself, uh, like a deployment, will actually uh, mount that secret as a volume. And those can be exposed either through environment variables or through files that are mounted in the pod. Uh, but the underlying underpinning um, data data source is the Kubernetes secret. So yeah, absolutely. So actually for the demo, we're doing exactly that. So maybe that's a good time to show that. So in the demo, I have a deployment here and we can take a look at its configuration. Um, you should be able to see the secret uh, ref here. So in this case, we have a database connection. Uh, it's very simple. It's just basically uh, using Postgres to connect or it's connecting to a Postgres instance running in the same cluster uh, as the demo and doing a select one. Uh, the, the key piece is that we want to get a, a Postgres URL that actually contains uh, all the credentials that are dynamically created by Vault. So, so this is pretty much what you would need, um, this little bit here, and that would actually mount your, um, your secret uh, as an environment variable. Uh, you can also, in this example, we're doing it as, a, as, a, as an actual uh, volume mount as well. So that's... And the way that works is, uh, let's go up here. That's using a Vault Dynamic secret. In this case, it's this one. Um, and what you'll see is a configuration here in the spec that um, basically is going to fetch from our from our Vault instance uh, from a database a da a dynamic secrets engine for Postgres. It's going to grab some creds uh, credentials periodically. And it will ensure that those credentials are periodically refreshed um, so that the lease doesn't necessarily elapse and you don't have any sort of churn with your application. So Ben, uh, I wanna ask a couple of questions around the, the order of operations here. So, so you showed that demo application, you know, that, that's connected to PostgreSQL um, and, and there's a secret reference in there. Now, when does that secret get pulled from the vault? Is it is it already available on the cluster or is it the moment that container is deployed, will the secrets operator then you know, uh, kick off the, 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 the necessary action to go into vault, retrieve that secret, put it in etcd and provide it to that, um, that, that workload? Yeah, it would be the moment that the custom resource is applied actually. So as soon as the custom resource is applied, the vault secrets operator will, will actually ensure that that uh, secret data is synced to the Kate's uh, secret. So okay. you could deploy your app and maybe it doesn't come up yet because the secret isn't there, but once you deploy the, or apply the dynamic secret, uh, for example, this one, uh, the secret will be uh, uh, synced for you and to the specific destination that's uh, defined here. So yeah, so you can mix it, you can do this in any order you want. Eventually it will become like consistent and it will be operational. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, and, okay, I, I think I think relatively um, like the order of operations, it seems like it's it's going to do it the moment that that you need it. So it's not just the secrets aren't just like sitting around when when they're not being used. Um, yeah, absolutely. What about for a dynamic secret? Let's say it's been revoked, but there's a container workload that's still using it, and, and the container is running. Um, what's going to happen when when that credential is revoked? Uh, in the case of uh, the configuration we had before, it, once the uh, secret is revoked, um, VSO will detect that, um, and once it once it uh, it will actually try to issue new credentials from Vault, and it will it can do optionally do what's called a rollout restart on the application, which basically tells the application, okay, 
there's some new secret data here now i want you to restart and so it can actually you know reload that newly that new dynamic secret data okay and, and it sounds like from what you're saying that that behavior can be configured if you don't want to break applications when it when when something has been revoked yeah, and maybe absolutely. you set the policy to not do the the, the yeah policy. you can define that yeah i won't go into too much detail but there is a there is a configuration for that you just you can provide these rollout restart targets and you can have as many as you'd like uh, it supports deployment stateful sets um, i forgot the other one daemon said yeah it supports at least three core types um, for rollout restarts and uh, yeah i can kind of demo that actually if you want, I can. Yeah, let's see it. Yeah, we can do it. I won't do a revocation, but I can do something else. I can demonstrate some of the remediation capabilities of VSO. So um, the uh, the the VDS instance I just showed you, the dynamic secret uh, resource, it's been syncing this secret here. So if I delete that secret, um, VSO should detect that um, that the secret's been deleted. So let's say you had an accident; some user accidentally deleted it then VSO should detect that and re automatically recreate it. So you saw that happen. And these are going to have new credentials. And you will see here that actually this kicked off a new deployment. So it, it restarted our select one sort of application here. Yep. OK, so you know, in the world of GitOps, there, there's uh, the notion of a source of truth, where if, if you delete something in Kubernetes, then your GitOps should just figure that out and automatically redeploy whatever's in GitHub. So in that situation, GitHub is a source of truth because if you deleted a deployment.yaml in GitHub, then it will get deleted off your Kubernetes cluster as well, or at least it's Correct. Yep. you're implementing GitOps right. Now, yep. in the world of Vault and secrets, where's the source of truth? Is that in Vault itself? Yeah, the source of truth would be in Vault itself, yes. And and the, how, yeah. how do you work with Vault-based secrets? Do you have a Kubernetes-based model of working with the secrets, or do you use a Vault CLI? What's what's the method that, that operates? Underlying, it's using the Vault API directly to to get secret data. Um, yeah. And um, yeah. That's so if an operator wanted to delete a, a, a Vault secret, so not in the way that you had done it, but to delete the source of that secret, they wouldn't go through Kubernetes. They would. They would go directly. No, they would go through Vault itself and delete the secret. Yes, exactly. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. And then the VSO would pick that up exactly. So, so in the case of let's say a static secret like here, it would it would take care of that. So you could it would if they delete the static secret, then yeah. Can you use something like Terraform, um, or you know, there's there's models out there of running Terraform in a Kubernetes cluster to manage. Uh, as kind of like a management cluster to manage your infrastructure. Can you use Terraform to work with Vault in, in a similar way? Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You can use the Terraform Vault provider that we from HashiCorp, um, and it can provision and configure Vault for you, uh, absolutely, using Terraform. So OK. So, this yeah. is great, because a lot of EKS customers use Terraform to deploy EKS. So yeah. you know, as part of that infrastructure process of spinning up an EKS cluster, uh, they can also configure Vault and, and all the secrets in it. All of that, they can stick that in their GitOps, their infrastructure as code, their, their Terraform. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I'm not too familiar of a Terraform operator, per se. Um, I know we have one for a Terraform Cloud, but I don't know about any others. Uh, okay. But yeah, you could actually provision that through some other GitOps pipeline where you, you, know, you, you commit your Terraform code and some agent or some application applies that for you. Yep. Yeah. And you'd want to do that before you, you know, well, you don't necessarily have to, but if you want to, VSO will eventually figure out, you know, okay, I can talk to Vault, I can get some secrets. So even if the secret engines aren't configured beforehand, VSO will keep trying to get those secrets in perpetuity, basically. Makes sense. Uh, so slightly off topic question from chat here from Critzy TKO. How does Terraform Enterprise go about managing Kubernetes state and Terraform state? And And I'll take this one step further and ask, how does you know um, Vault Enterprise or you know HashiCorp's managed Vault go about managing um, the secrets state? That's a good question. I'm not sure about. I'm not that familiar with Terraform Cloud, so <laughs> maybe we need to talk to someone from the Terraform team. Um, but I do believe that, like, I could throw something out there. I think that you know Terraform Cloud has its own sort of back storage backend for maintaining the Terraform state itself. Uh, and it's, I'm sure that's stored like in, in a secure fashion. 
Um, I'm not sure. I don't understand the get totally get the question about the vault state. You mean like the the the, the, the secrets themselves? I'm I'm guessing they're they're stored encrypted in you yeah know, yeah yeah control vault. Yeah, server. they're stored encrypted on um, on our like for Ashicorp vault dedicated. They're in, they're stored using a, a backend, a secure backend. Yes. Yep. And in the case of Vault on Kubernetes, like so you have Vault running in EKS right now, right? Yeah, so in Vault on Kubernetes, you can have EBS volumes. So you would run as a stateful set. Um, and then you'd have like uh, PVCs, um, pers persistent volume claims. And you'd want those sort of encrypted as well uh, using AWS KMS. Um, but yeah, but in, at the end of the day, all, the, all of the Vault storage is encrypted, even if the block storage isn't encrypted. Got it. Got it. We've got another question from chat here. Um, another Terraform related question. Uh, and, and I think this is, is very common. We're going to see Terraform related questions here. Um, it's, it's, it's one of Ooh. the most common ways people work with Amazon EKS today. From Ashwin, Ashwin adds, how can we authenticate with Vault from the Terraform pipeline without expo uh, exporting that token as an environment variable? Um, yeah. Well, how can you authenticate to Terraform or to um, Vault? Authenticating to Vault from your so if you were setting up Vault using Terraform, how do you authenticate to that? Vault? Yeah, so you would use the Terraform Vault provider for that, um, and it supports many different um, backends, uh, authentication engines for um, for authenticating. So it has specific login backends for AWS auth. Uh, you can provide a token if you want as well. Like uh, you through the, you could provide that through an environment variable, a Vault token. Or you can have the provider get a token for you um, uh, just as you're applying it. So yeah, okay. And you don't need to store that in the state or anything anywhere. Yeah. Gotcha. And and we saw that for at least the VSO that you were showing, we use a service account to set up that. that yep. We're okay. using yeah exactly. So we're using that sort of uh, federation um, through service account. So in the example of, of this particular uh, uh, secret, um, we're using the Kubernetes. Um, authentication engine in Vault. So Vault does have native support for Kubernetes uh, authenticating using Kubernetes token. And the way VSO does that is it will mint a token um, based on the service account configuration that's configured in the Vault auth custom resource. Um, and those tokens are ephemeral, right? So they don't, I think, I don't know what the max TTL is there, 10 minutes or something. Um, so we're just, we're only, only creating new tokens as we need them. We're not using any tokens that are that are mounted as a, like a volume within a pod. Yeah. Awesome. And folks, keep the questions coming. We we love it here. Um, all right. And 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 Ben, I I want to. I feel like I've sidetracked you from the demo quite a bit here. Is there anything else you were planning to to show us today? Um, yeah, I wanted to. Yeah, there's a couple more things I'd like to show. I, I kind of went across some of the remediations. There's a whole host of other remediations, like if the secret data is tampered with, so the destination secret, if you modify that data, um, VSO HMAX it, so it has an HMAC key and, and it validates, uh, can check to see if the, the data has been modified. Um, that can be used for remediation purposes as well. So uh, if, I, if I were to modify this secret, um, I just remove a field from the data. Um, VSO should pick it up. Uh, it, it's not instantaneous because it's periodically polling for that, um, but it should eventually see that there's uh, something amiss and it should actually uh, remediate. There you go. So you see there, we went from one data element to the second one, uh, to two rather, um, and that now has the canonical, uh, it's the source of truth, which is vault. So it's it's represented in the Kate secret data now. Gotcha. And and one of one of the things that that a lot of people don't realize was is that Kubernetes built in doesn't have any sort of auditing for who accessed what secret at what time. Mm. Um, it can you talk a little bit about that in the world of Vault? Is that is there an auditing record? Did we know that someone accessed or modified that record? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Vault has a full auditing system for tracking all those sorts of things, I believe. So yeah. As far as Kubernetes goes, I'm not entirely sure if like any of that access is logged in the Kubernetes logs itself. But yeah, um, that could be a potential room for improvement there um, in terms of access. Yeah, I believe that the recommendation is you is is to build a custom you know admission controller to to be able to 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 fully audit how uh, okay. secrets are are leveraged. Um, so cool. again, I think nothing built in, but there's 
models for doing it. Um, but but yeah, uh, yeah, it's really absolutely. why you want to use managed or or centralized solutions for, for things like this. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool. The other one thing show I to show is the secrets transformation. Something? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So um, Vault uh, VSO supports templating, um, so you can actually you don't have to necessarily as your you don't your application doesn't have to consume the data as it is represented in Vault. You can actually transform it uh, before it actually is written to uh, the Kate secret data. Um, and the way that's done is you can provide either inline templates or we have a, a, a global secrets transformation definition custom resource that you can use. And this allows you to basically define through um, Go templating. You can provide uh, source templates um, or you can provide just uh, just regular templates. And these templates, uh, the keys will be mapped to the Kate secret data and the template will be rendered uh, or the value will be rendered from the template. So this is a transformation and these transformations can be shared across all of your dynamic secret or all of your um, VSO secret custom resource types. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of interesting. So if you wanted to 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 deploy like a, a single definition of what an application's configuration should be uh, to multiple Kate's namespaces, you can use this feature. Um, and the way that is referenced is on the I think I have it on the dynamic secret um, on this one. Um, there's a transformation in the spec here where you can say, okay, I want to get a, I have a transformation reference, and that would be a reference to this custom resource I just showed you. So yeah. what that allows you to do is you can transform the the input, which in the case of the database credentials is basically just a username and password. And you can have it come out something like this. So you could have like, if your app you know, took a JSON configuration file, mm. it would look like this. Um, if it's a, like a Java properties or something, or you could just get the password or in the case of the demo, we're using this URL here um, and we're constructing a URL uh, from um, a template. This is really something that makes not just the, the developer's life easier, but also the operations teams. So, for example, say multiple containers wanted to use this PostgreSQL uh, credentials, uh, the ops team wouldn't have to make a separate secret based on how the, the consuming application wants to access that data. They make it once, and then they update it. They have one place to update it. Um, and the devs get to say, look, I want username and password separate, or maybe I want the entire URL as an environment variable. That that makes a lot of sense. That, that's that's, that's yep. a nice to have, for sure. Yeah, definitely. And it doesn't like lock them in, so they don't have to modify their application. They can just, you know, they can just create a template that matches what the application sort of interface, you know, whatever the spec is on that. Excellent. So that, that's kind of nice. You don't have to tweak or modify the the data structure on like the vault side because sometimes you can't. So in the case of dynamic secrets, you basically, for at least for the database, you just get like a username and password typically. Uh, but you don't have any other like extra configuration coming from that uh, from that source. Yep, and so that's that's kind of cool. And one one thing oops, down here, if I do modify the secret transformation, any rep refers to that secrets transformation should actually uh, detect there was a change. So I can actually remove. Let's say I don't know. I'll just remove. Maybe we just want the URL. If I store that, we should see. A change up here, and I think we should oh. see. Yeah, so if I go back here, we should see that previous secret had like a bunch of other like app JSON and so on and so forth. Now it just has a password URL username, and those would affect all uh, referring um, custom resources, secret custom resources. Gotcha. So that's kind of cool from a management perspective, like a larger, Definitely. larger Definitely. organization. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. Um, we have another question in chat here from Nawang. Asking if we deploy Vault in cloud, or really, I think to extend this question, deploy Vault really anywhere um, and have multiple Kubernetes clusters, what would be the procedure for authentication? And I just want to add one quick thing here that um, this is another reason why a central secrets management solution is so great because you might be using Kubernetes secrets extensively, but when you want to access that secret outside of a given Kubernetes cluster, you're, you're kind of out of luck. Um, and, yeah. and so by hosting, say, secrets centrally, the big advantage is that they can be accessed from multiple clusters. But specifically to this question, what's the procedure here? 
So if you wanted to spend, if you had more than one cluster, let's say, uh, you would you would you would have to provision the the various clusters, and you would create multiples of these vault connections. So these vault connections define like how do you like how do I connect? Like where, what's the URL? You know what's the configuration for connecting to that vault instance? And that all gets tied back to the vault auth itself. Um, so you'd have multiple vault auth configurations based on your different clusters. And, and Ben, what if you wanted to access these secrets from Lambda or ECS? Oh, I think we do have something. I think we have something for accessing Vault secrets from a Lambda. Um, and then also, if you were doing it from ECS, ECS, uh, I guess I'm not. That one I'm not sure of. Uh, maybe a Vault agent uh, container um, yeah. image you would use. I that think. I think uh, earlier, Sai, we talked about the three different integration points, and we talked about an agent sidecar. To access vault secrets outside of Kubernetes, you sort of just pull that agent out, right? So it's available separately, mm -hmm. uh, and that can be used directly. Gotcha. Yeah, so that one, the one on the right here, following the sidecar pattern, um, and, and you know, actually doing a quick Google, it looks like there is an official vault agent with Amazon Elastic Container Service ECS. So a supported approach, but, but look, okay. Let's say I had something totally arbitrary. You could still take an API approach to pull these secrets. Yes. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So you could even use curl if you wanted to, <laughs> you know. or you can use the vault client, you know, itself. Yeah. It's just... So, so very powerful, a lot of different ways to access these secrets and it's, um, it, you know, service agnostic, whether you're running Lambda, yep. ECS, EKS, on-premises, EKS, anywhere, whatever it might be. Um, there's, a way to access the secrets, some of them through you know, supported agents. I think Kubernetes has really the coolest, tightest, I don't want to say coolest, but one of the tightest integrations with allowing it to appear as native Kubernetes secrets. I think that's what Kubernetes users really want. They, they don't want to have to learn something new. They're like, hey, I know secrets. Make it work like a Kubernetes secret. So I think it's, it's cool to see that the, the VSO uh, uh, yep. enables that. Um, yeah, just give me a file. I want to read it. Give me some configuration. I don't care where the secret comes from. I just need it to, you know, my application to run. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Love the questions here. Uh, I want to share a little bit of kudos with y'all. Kritzi is loving the episode this week. So so thank you, Ben, Steve. Um, anything else you want to share with the, the demo here, Ben? I think that was primarily it. Um, I didn't really go over the HCP stuff, but it's all, they're all sort of the same. Kind of pattern but you can just wanted to say that you can use our you know HTTP vault secrets as well it's just another custom resource and you can pull down uh secrets uh, from HTTP. you can pull down the secrets application itself directly into a kate's uh, secret data um, and all of these all of these secret um custom resource types they all support transformation so it's pretty much the same it is the same configuration across all of them so it's pretty unified there yeah and no, awesome. that's pretty much it. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. All right. So what we saw today in that demo is Vault running on the cluster itself. Ben deployed it in, in his Amazon EKS cluster, showed the integration with Vault Secrets Operator, and even a demo application of how those secrets can be pulled. Um, but what if you don't want to manage Vault? We have a lot of customers come to us and say, manage things for us. Uh, <laughs> we we want to reduce overhead when possible. So Steve, I'm going to pass it to you now to talk a little bit about that. Sure, thanks, Sai. And we do have a slide, I think, that we can um, we can pop up if that's handy. Thank you. Um, ben talked a little bit about these different offerings uh, at the end of his demo, so I just want to emphasize uh, we've seen Vault Enterprise really running in in Kubernetes locally in that cluster in the far right, self managed every piece of control that you could ever imagine there. Uh, if you need to tweak that. Um, and uh, many, many secret types. Um, on HCP Vault, uh, so that managed offering, uh, that HashiCorp managed a single tenant offering that we mentioned, and I think we had a question uh, it, during the session today on this. Um, that's really that same vault. Uh, we're maintaining the infrastructure for you. Um, can you know choose to run that on AWS um, and uh, really, just you know, taking away some of that, some of that management pain. Um, on the sort of far left here, HCP Vault Secrets, which builds on uh, the HashiCorp Cloud Platform, is a 
the newest of these three offerings uh, really takes a multi-tenant SaaS approach to secrets management. Um, and so uh, if, if uh, our listeners, our watchers today are thinking of how do I get started with HashiCorp, Vault, how do I, how do I prevent my company, my customers from appearing in the news uh, in, in a month or two, uh, this is the very simplest way to get started. Come in, sign up for an account. You can, again, use everything that Ben demoed today. Pull those secrets right into Kubernetes and be off and running in a safe, in a safe, uh, in a safe way. Awesome. I'll I'll drop a, a link here as well, so folks know where to where to check it out. I love that SaaS here, by the way, has a double meaning. It's not just software as a service; it's secrets as a service. <laughs> love it. <laughs> we'll use that, <laughs> uh, folks. Um, anything else you want to share with our audience on how they can maybe get connected, get started? how they can reach out to you. Maybe if they have questions, maybe you can share um, you know, LinkedIn or Twitter or anything like that. Uh, Steve, we'll start with you. Sure, I'm happy to connect on LinkedIn with anyone. Uh, really uh, love to talk about these integrations with Ben uh, to help you all to, I think we're kind of on a, a shared mission here to protect the world from secrets leakage, from misuse, from all sorts of bad things that can happen to us all. So. Uh, we're all in this together. Uh, would love to connect. Awesome. And Ben? Yeah, yeah. Likewise. Um, typically, the best way is to reach reach me is probably through the GitHub. <laughs> uh, believe it or not, through the Vault Secrets Operator repo. If you have any questions there, just you know, driving issues or whatever, that's the best place. Um, I can pass the link on to you. I think. Um, I yeah. Yeah. That. Definitely. We I'll also see. have a we also have a discuss page on. Uh, HashiCorp.com. Uh, so you're welcome to reach out to us there as well. Yeah, we also have the discuss page as well. Yeah, we can check that out. I don't have the link handy for that, but cool, cool. And and so is it fair to say, Ben, that you're uh, one of the the maintainers for the the VSL? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Very I work cool. With, uh, yeah, on our ecosystem team, we have multiple people working on it. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, well, folks, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. This was really, honestly, such an awesome episode with a lot of questions, uh, I think, diving a little bit deeper. also want to thank my guests today, Ben, Steve. Thank you so much for taking the time today to come on Containers from the Couch. For our folks watching, if you want to see more videos like this in the future, if you have any feedback, be sure to subscribe to Containers from the Couch on YouTube or twitch.tv slash AWS. Drop us a comment with any feedback or let us know what you want us to cover next. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks again, Ben, Steve, and folks, we'll catch you next time.